Hello, it's Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist, and uh, I've got a video here which features a uh, discussion on black magic and voodoo and all that kind of thing. So I thought it would be interesting. We're going to listen to that in a moment. Just briefly, at the, uh, at the end of this uh, video, I'm going to be just making a few comments on a video I posted yesterday about uh, Matt Dillahunty making some uh, comments on Jordan Peterson. So if you want to hear that, go to the end of this video or just wait. So let's go ahead then with uh, voodoo and black magic. Some of what? Um, some of the of the culture, some of the black magics were powerful than others. H you how know, do you determine? Black... How do you determine that there's any such thing as powerful black magic? Yeah, because people go to so there are some things some people can claim to do, and some people cannot do that. Some <clears> voodoo priests cannot do all, like certain things other voodoo priests can claim they can do. Where, where's so, so it seems to me he's saying that, and I assume this is in Africa, that there are voodoo priests, some of which can do black magic and others can't do black magic. The evidence that they've done anything. People can claim anything they want to. It doesn't mean it's true. That's why when you say evidence, the evidence is what we see in the, in the, in the neighborhood. Like, like I keep telling you, like, I can't go and test it in a science lab. All I see is that he wasn't rich. All of a sudden he's rich and okay. he's not working. He doesn't have a good job to be rich to be affording all these sure. things. Sure, and what I'm telling you is that someone who isn't rich, who becomes rich, does not in any way explain how they became rich. So let's just try and unravel that. He seems to be saying that a poor man has gone to um, a black magic priest, a priest apparently who can do potent black magic, as distinct from uh, those frauds who can't do potent black magic. He's gone to him, I presume that he's paid him some money, and then he's become rich. I wonder in what sense he became rich, whether, I don't know, millions of dollars suddenly appeared in his bank account, or manifested under his bed, or maybe by some other means. Uh, maybe as a result of going to see the practitioner, he decided to set up a business, and he became rich, feeling that his trip to the uh, voodoo doctor or priest would actually give him that power and luck in business to become rich. So I'd like to know some more details about these particular cases. I don't even think you can necessarily assume that he's rich just because he, he could have borrowed a bunch of money. Well, I don't think he would have borrowed a bunch of money because obviously if he's a poor man living in a township in Africa, uh, he would not be economically viable for a bank to lend him money. So that's highly unlikely. How do you know he's rich? Did you look I at his? Mean, did you look at his bank account? You know how do how do? Uh, no, like, things. I think it's from a different cultural background. That's why you may not understand. But I do urge you to speak to Africans who are who know these things why? very well, and they'll tell you why. What? Because what? Know, Gabriel, what evidence can they possibly present of a connection? All they can do is tell me stories. This happened, and then this happened. I have no way of verifying that those things actually happened, and I don't have a way to demonstrate a connection between them. That's why things don't just happen like that, right? Things don't just happen, right? This is we're so, right back to the beginning with the fallacy of argument from ignorance. You're, sometimes you're basically things do just happen. Yeah, you don't you don't think that people don't show up in court? I think it happens all the time here. It's the same, really, as argument that prayers cure uh, diseases. I had stage four cancer, it went into remission, um, I said some prayers and I got better. Uh, stage cancer doesn't just cure, stage four cancer doesn't just cure itself, these things don't just happen. Therefore, the prayer must have been the cause of my cancer going into remission. I mean, but I didn't even finish that story. Later on, she said, you know, she never wanted him. To, she never wanted to take him to court. How is it that someone who was willing to take someone to court all of a, all of a sudden has a change of heart? You something happened. So people, 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 people can't have a change of heart about whether or not they want to take somebody to court. People do that all the I time mean, without voodoo black magic. Here, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I do understand where you're coming from. That's why I said. You have to stick to, you have to actually go to Africa. No, you don't understand where I'm coming from, or there's no way the words you have to go to Africa could... This is what happens when you break down these arguments. Uh, well, they're not really arguments, but these connections, that these unjustified connections that people make, causal connections. When you break them down, 
they will suddenly put a big barrier in front of you and say, well, you have to go to Africa. You're not going to spend thousands of dollars or pounds going all the way to Africa to check out these stories um, any more than you're going to learn uh, ancient Hebrew and Greek in order to read the uh, Old and New Testaments in the original, as an apologist might say, well, you've got to read it in the original and you've got to read every single word and you've got to have studied the hermeneutics. You, you break down their arguments, you expose all the rational flaws in their arguments and their points, and then they put this great big block in front of you. No, you don't have to do any of that because the obligation is still on those making the claims to actually justify them properly. Possibly come out of your mouth. You, you, you don't, exactly, because no, it's a you don't get to say exactly. We're done with that. Ah, you have to go to Africa. That's special pleading. Yeah. It's the, Africa is not any different than anywhere else. You can either show that. Well, the, even if it were, then people could go there and investigate. Yeah. But me going to Africa to hear stories about people who say, I went to the witch doctor and the next day this woman didn't show up in court. That's a waste of my time and money to go to Africa to hear stories like that. Plus, I can hear those stories without going to Africa. You can have everybody in Africa who has had an experience with a voodoo priest. Uh, just set up a web forum, uh, put one in the public square where they okay. can all... So he's effectively saying that even if you went to Africa, all you would get is the stories. And if you want the stories, you don't have to, you don't have to go to Africa to get those. There was a case where I think it was Assad called in saying that there were air breathers, there were air eaters in uh, India who survived without eating any food. Now, that would be a case where in order to check out that claim, yes, you know, I'll go to India. I'll go to India. If you finance it and you compensate me and everything, I will go to India and I will check out that claim. I will sit. Uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I haven't read Homer's Odyssey. Uh, I will get some major reading material that I haven't read and I want to read. And I will sit in a cell with this person for, shall we say, three weeks to make sure that all they do is drink water and they don't eat anything. I will do that. If you compensate me adequately, say, I don't know, for my time, shall we say, uh, $20,000 per week, I will do that and I will go and check out the claim. Yeah, in that case, uh, that would be fruitful. And then if really, you, you know, you manage, to, you manage to stay awake or you manage to somehow satisfy yourself, or I would probably have to go with somebody else, take it in turn sleeping in order to check out that that person has not eaten anything. You get the point. But in terms of all these stories, all you're doing is getting stories, whether you go to Africa or not. So, okay. So just, uh, so I thought you might find that interesting because I've never heard uh, black magic discussed before, but it falls into the same thing as, you know, prayer cured my cancer or, you know, whatever. And all these, all these, uh, all these claims, which really uh, can't really be falsified, but neither can they be proven. So just moving on, just briefly, my, my video on Matt's comments on Jordan Peterson, call him a fucking lunatic. Uh, you know, obviously he's entitled to his opinion. I expect that he doesn't literally mean he's a lunatic because I don't think Matt probably has that expertise in mental health to get that diagnosis. And obviously he was being hyperbolic. Um, but I've got to question whether it was a good thing to do in the sense that he's been on the stage with Jordan Peterson. He had a dignified discussion with him. Okay, he could have taken him to task more. I agree with that. But he got he he was exposed through that to a much wider audience than he ever has been before which i think was a good thing and my only problem with him you know doing things like this uh using inflammatory language is that he's in danger of backing himself into his own little niche that he's created for himself and nobody's really going to want to sit on the stage with him if they think that maybe later on he'll turn on them and uh, be rubbishing them at every possible opportunity. So I'm just a bit concerned that, that that may well be the case and we won't see him on the stage with people like Richard Dawkins and, you know, whoever else might actually want to debate him. 
Of course, he may well not be concerned about that. He may well he may well be happy with the position that he's created for himself. He's got a good following, and he probably makes a, he probably makes a reasonable living out of what he does. But in terms of reaching a wider audience and being the effective counter apologist that he is, then I think it's a shame that we probably won't see him expanding out and discussing important issues with high profile people. Let me know what you think of my opinion. I know a lot of you disagree. I've read some of your comments and you, you think it's a good thing that he called Peterson out as a fucking lunatic. Well, you're entitled to your, your opinion, but um, I'm not really too sure that it was the best possible sort of thing for Matt Dillahunty <laughs> as a career, as a career move. Okay. That's all for now. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye.